In this WrestleTalk news, Dolph Ziggler is the new NXT champion. What? Further updates on Cody Rhodes' next move in wrestling. I know, I'm getting tired of them too. And Tempest's full review of NXT 2.0, where, quick reminder, Dolph Ziggler won the NXT Championship. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos, because I think it bears repeating, Dolph Ziggler won the NXT Championship. Zilf Dogler, this man, this man right here. Wild. Support WrestleTalk! So last night was NXT 2.0's Roadblock, a TV special that saw a triple threat match between NXT champion Bron Breaker, Tommaso Ciampa, and Dolph Ziggler. And to hype that match, Breaker and Ciampa faced the Dirty Dogs on this week's episode of Raw, where Bron pinned Dolph Ziggler. So naturally in this triple threat, Dolph Ziggler won by pinning Tommaso Ciampa. Dolph Ziggler is your new NXT champion. Dolph Ziggler, this man. This man right here. Tempest will have a full review of NXT 2.0 here shortly where he'll dive into more detail, but needless to say that this will probably be building to a Ziggler Breaker match at NXT Stand and Deliver, or alternatively, Breaker could just be moving up to the main roster imminently, as both he and Champa had previously worked house shows for the main roster and will be continuing to do so this coming weekend. But now let's talk some more about Cody Rhodes. I know, it seems like he's mentioned in every news video at this point, but the situation reportedly keeps changing, so we got to report on it. That's what we did. So, quick recap, Cody Rhodes left AEW and he was definitely going to WWE. Then he wasn't definitely going to WWE, but it was still likely. Then those talks fizzled out. Things got eerily quiet. Maybe Cody is going back to AEW to work with this Ring of Honor acquisition. WWE still wants him in time for Mania though, and now we're here. In a new update from Dave Meltzer on the Risk Observer boards, he mentioned that Cody has multiple offers currently and WWE wants their answer soon for obvious reasons. Those reasons being the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in history, being under a month away. Way. In an update from Fightful Select, Cody is apparently well aware of the rumors circulating about him and his next move in wrestling, but sources close to Cody have been saying that he won't be signing anywhere for quite some time and have been downplaying reports about his next move. Within WWE, Fightful reports that among talent there was chatter and pitches of a Cody Rhodes vs Seth Rollins match for WrestleMania, but that was uncertain at best. One source within WWE noted that nothing has changed regarding Cody, which doesn't help at all because it hasn't changed from what? From that he's definitely coming in, or that he's likely coming in, or that he's not anymore, or that it's uncertain, hasn't changed from what WWE source? Give me the answers! Regardless, we'll of course have to just wait and see what happens. But with the deadline getting closer and closer, the chances of Cody appearing at WrestleMania seem to be getting smaller and smaller, though there's still always the Raw or SmackDown after Mania. That's always an option. What do you want to see Cody do next? Let us know in the comments. And now Hot Tag to Tempest for his review of NXT 2.0, where Dolph Ziggler became NXT Champion! This man! This man right here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, why not? What's going on, Russell Talk friends and fans? Tempest is back with another review of NXT Roadblock in about five minutes. So the show opened up with the semi-final match in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic as Dakota Kai and Wendy Chu took on Raquel Gonzalez and Cora Jade. This was a pretty good match, albeit brought down by a few dumb decisions, one of which being Toxic Attraction attacking Raquel Gonzalez basically right in front of the referee. Wrestling referees really are another level of bad, aren't they? I mean, in kayfabe, wrestling referees are so much more incompetent than MLB umpires or NHL referees. Clean it up, guys, come on. But Raquel was able to fire up and make a comeback until Dakota Kai started hearing voices in her head, they counseled her, they understood, and they talked her out of hitting a big boot on Raquel Gonzalez in the corner. Immediately she snapped out of it and Wendy Chu hit her big Vader bomb off the top rope and Dakota Kai hit the double foot stomp for the win. The Dakota Kai stuff still doesn't land with me, but this was a really good match and a fun way to open up the show. This gets a 4 out of 5. And then next we got a singles match between Tiffany Stratton and Fallon Henley. These names, man. Henley got more offense than you would expect in this match and that led to her picking up the win after Saray hit a drop kick behind the ref's back. Henley celebrated with her stock Seinfeld music with Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen for some reason. I didn't get a whole lot out of this match and I don't know why I'm supposed to care about Tiffany Stratton. This gets a 2 out of 5. And then we had the last man standing match between LA Knight and Grayson Waller. These guys have been wrestling for so long, I don't even know what they're fighting over at this point. Like, how did we get here? This all started about who was gonna get to host Halloween Havoc. Grayson Waller was a babyface at the start of this feud. Anyway, LA Knight has turned himself into a really good babyface with the crowd now chanting yeah along with each 
each one of his strikes. I like that a lot, and there were a lot of really cool spots in this match, and it did have that big blow-off match kind of feel to it, as LA Knight threw Grayson Waller through a table and threw him off the crow's nest later in the match. This is where Sang of the Thunder got involved, and although he was taken out of things by being handcuffed around the post, he was able to slip Grayson Waller an object, allowing him to hit LA Knight and hit a huge elbow drop off the top rope through the announce table. He mimed dribbling a ball through his legs in mid-air. That was class. The elbow drop was fantastic, and it was enough to give Grayson Waller the win. I don't know that I need to see this match again. I'm ready for these two to go their separate directions. This match is a lot of fun. This match gets a 5 out of 5. And then we got the second semi-final match in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic as Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray took on Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter. The biggest moment of this match has to be when Casey Catanzaro hit Kaylee Ray with a Tower of Doom Poison Rana, and it looked like it just about killed poor Kaylee Ray. Thankfully, Kaylee Ray was able to recover enough to hit the KLR Bomb, allowing Io Shirai to hit her big moonsault for the win, advancing to the finals of this tournament. This was another really fun tag match, and one spot did make this match, but it was a hell of a spot. This gets a 4 out of 5. We were supposed to see the Creed Brothers challenge Imperium for the NXT tag titles on this show, but the Creed Brothers were taken out in the parking lot earlier in the night. A bunch of different tag teams all accused each other of attacking the Creed Brothers, but MSK said they would step up and take the Creed Brothers' spot in this match. Hmm, I don't know about you, but I smell a heel turn coming. I think MSK attacked them. They're the only ones who benefited from this situation. That being said, the subsequent tag match of MSK versus Imperium only went about seven minutes before the Creed Brothers ran in, and it was a good seven minutes, there just wasn't anything to it. And considering what was advertised for this show, this was extremely disappointing. This gets a two out of five. We learned that A-Kid is coming to NXT. That's exciting. And then we got the main event as Braun Breaker defended the NXT Championship against Dolph Ziggler and Tommaso Ciampa. Where'd he even start? As I'm sure you all know by now, Dolph Ziggler won the NXT Championship on this show. The road getting there was a lot of fun. This was a very good triple threat match with plenty of really close near falls that had me thinking that Dolph Ziggler was gonna win this title before he actually did. Braun Breaker appeared to have the match won when Robert Roode pulled the referee out of the ring, and then again as Tommaso Ciampa was gonna hit his running knee on Braun Breaker, Robert Roode then pulled Braun Breaker out of the ring, allowing Dolph Ziggler to hit a super kick on Ciampa for the win. Is this ridiculous? Absolutely. But is it the most chaotic thing to happen in NXT? Absolutely. And at this point, I've said this before, when I watch WWE, I'm cheering for the side of chaos. And tonight, chaos won. He's an agent of chaos. If I had to guess, I would say Dolph Ziggler will probably be a transitional NXT champion, most likely dropping the title to Walter at NXT Stand and Deliver, and honestly, if that means I get to see Dolph Ziggler bump around for Walter and take his chops, I'm kind of here for it. But that being said, this really put a halt to Braun Breaker's momentum, and I don't think he's quite ready to be called up to the main roster just yet, so I don't really know where he's supposed to go from here. Maybe Braun will just win the title back and we'll talk about how stupid this whole thing was, but until then, let us all just let it play out. In the meantime, this was a fabulous main event, an excellent match with a really momentous title change. I'm gonna give this a five out of five. I really enjoyed this match. As for the show as a whole, there were a lot of really big highlights on this show, but at the same time, the things that didn't work for me on the show really didn't work for me and all the things that I don't talk about in these reviews like the backstage segments are basically always terrible. If a few of the matches were cleaned up just a little bit I would be very inclined to give this show a 5 out of 5 but that being said I will give it a 4 out of 5. Definitely a few things to go out of your way to see. And that just about wraps it up for me. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this week's episode of NXT make sure you go over to Russell Talk Podcast later on today where myself and SP3 will be breaking down the entire show in complete detail. Until then make sure you respect Respect your tribal Pete and remember that LIW is fine. And WWE has made such a habit of doling out the platitude in recent years that future endeavouring has become a verb. So if it's expected that WWE always endeavour to future endeavour, how can we be shocked when in future, future endeavours are dispensed? But that's what this list is out to prove though, because I am Laurie Hailing from Parts of Unknown and these are the 10 most shocking WWE firings ever.